Ray Wilson goes in at um, left back. I mean, are there no more there from uh, around the breast of the British Isles that you, you, I mean, you, Alan, particularly, must have had trouble with at uh, different times down yeah. the years? Well, well, Kenny Sampson, really, you've got to think about him. He's about 80 caps. Kenny Sampson was a smashing player, wasn't he? 86 caps. No, the, 86 I, caps yeah. I'm only going to the two, the, the, the two lads there. Um, Cooper, I've been well. a bit of you been unkind to to the other lads in the World Cup side. I Tommy mean, Gemmell, one of the lions of uh, Lisbon. Would, would he go there? Yeah, Scotland as well. No, Ray Wilson was. I don't think even better. I'm not even thinking of anything else. <laughs> so it's Ray Wilson then, without too much more debate. Yeah, I think so. Well, that's not a bad uh, a bad start, is it? We've got yeah. Jennings by. A thumbnail, you said, Alan, didn't you? And you'd take, uh, you'd, you'd, you'd bow to the two boys on that. A thumbnail from Gordon Banks. We've got Danny McGrain at right fullback. Bobby Moore, without too much discussion once again. Um, and I would imagine, Skipper, or are you going to hold on? Yeah, well, Bobby Skipper Moore still be Skipper. Yeah, they've got it round the wrong way there. Bobby Moore should be on the left-hand side and, and John Charles on the right-hand right side. For you, Frank, we'll get it changed. We'll, we will, if we're going to do it, let's do it right then. He's, uh, he's very meticulous, <laughs> Frank, you know. He, <laughs> he, he likes that sort of thing. Yeah. He was a bit like always playing the left-hand yeah. side anyway, didn't he? Yeah. And we've got Ray Wilson as our left fullback. It was such a wonderful sight, actually, Alan, wasn't it? To see, you've talked about him knocking on the door at Hamden Park, but to see Bobby Moore walk out with his head up, ball under the arm, yeah, yeah. chest out. Yeah. Hey, England. we are England. Yeah. He looked you, as though when he got his work. gear on, he just walked out of Burton's window, hadn't he? You know? yeah. yes, I mean, there wasn't a hair out of place. The boy even looked good under his arm. Mm. He used to smell nice as he went out, you know. And he used to come off, and there wasn't a hair out of place when he came off the field, was there? I'm sure the opposition could sense that he was playing in the big time and they couldn't get much bigger than him because he never... I mean, <coughs> boy, as we all had the great attitude in the big matches too. Bobby Moore did it in a different way. He never stopped bloody talking all the time. Mm. But Bobby <laughs> just went about his job quietly and efficiently. But you could tell the way he carried him, himself and everything else that he was a, he was a very pinnacle. And he, he can mix it with the best after a game as well, Bob. Oh yes, yeah. we're drinking wise. Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. We can nearly yeah. drink more than Bolly. <laughs> yeah, thank you, Frank. He's a set. He couldn't drink more than Frank. <laughs> <laughs> Bobby's great trick was he always used to drink half pints, and people used to think. Bobby's a very steady guy. <laughs> he would have about 30 half pints in the night and, and waddle off home, wouldn't he? But he'd always been in a Sunday at West Ham, tracksuit on, 12 laps around the pitch. With his big wetsuit what thing on, sweat out. What know? a star. Oh, it was class. OK, more when we come back from the all-time British 11. Well, the debate has continued here around the table. I'm sure it has at home, and one or two more names obviously have, um, have come to the surface. Let's have a look at what we've got so far, this all-time British eleven: Jennings, McGrain, Moore, Charles and Wilson. Um, big Billy McNeil's name came up as we talked here during the commercial break. So too did Mike England's, mm. a player that you would know plenty about oh, as well. Oh, he's a brilliant footballer, Mike, you know, big man, 6'2", superb in the air. He used to get up there and hang there, never seemed to come down, and with his height as well, he used to win most things. Um, liked to play football, uh, wasn't a guy that, you know, got hold of the ball and thumped it. He'd, he'd look to, to pass to midfield players quite easily. Um, and a very, very much, always in, involved in the game, wanted to be involved in the game. Loved going out for free kicks and mm. corners. And I tell you what, when he got Soft his foot in as well, oh, he could kick people. Dave Mackay, yeah. who finished his career for Derby County playing in that position, would you put him in there or further forward? Well, Dave Mackay is one of my favourite players of all time. Um, I think he's just phenomenal. When, when we're going to go on about some Scotland players, you talk about Jim Baxter and Dennis Law, and the first person they will talk about, if you say, who's your favourite player of all time, and Allen's as well, mm. will be Dave Mackay. He, he was so good. I mean, people remember him from being so strong. He had fantastic skill as well. Great mm. pass the ball with either foot. Great mm. shot. Scored many and many a goal. He's right up amongst all of that. And what are we going to do with him? Does he go in somewhere? Uh, that's not easy, is it? I mean, you know, it, as Frank says, he's one of my all-time favourite players. I love playing with him, loved his enthusiasm. Uh, but when you're looking at, you know, geniuses that we're, we're thinking of picking in this side, you know, me picking, Alan picking and Frank picking, uh, it's difficult to fit everybody into it the way you want it to go. We, you, the English side that we picked was good, but now you're looking at a, a Great Britain eleven, which you've now got to include, you know, world-class players from from other. I'm teams. Getting the impression Dave Mackay isn't going to get into this side, am I right? <coughs> well, I think I played against him when he played left side midfield. I mean, as he got old, he went and played in the back in mm. the back four, mm. didn't he? At Derby. Left side, yeah. But I played with him, and I mean, when I was a kid, everything in the garden was roses to me. I loved football, and I was. Bounced along, and then we went to Tottenham this particular night, and I bounced into him. Oh, <laughs> it was 
welcome <laughs> to the real world. <laughs> he taught me more in the, in the first 45 minutes there. I said, who is this guy? I went in at half time to myself. And uh, he was so uncompromising. But he used to rattle you, take it off you, then he'd play as well. Mm. He was a smashing it's player. It's still the best all-time sports picture, isn't it? That one that yeah, he has Billy Bremner by the scruff yeah. of the neck. Yeah. I mean, that was... Yeah. You, you were there, weren't you? Weren't I there? was in that game, sir. I was there, wore the T-shirt. And the background of that story what was... What you didn't see afterwards was Dave buttoning him in the face. <laughs> oh, did he? Uh, that, that was the thing about it. <laughs> what um, so upset him? Well, Billy Bremner had gone over the top, you know, he, he, on the ball. He'd, he'd played the ball away. Allegedly. Billy Bremner just went on. Allegedly. Yes. Mm. And he allegedly butted him in the face <laughs> at the same time. And he allegedly got sent off, but the referee changed his mind. Because yeah, Dave threatened him, didn't Because Dave uh, said, uh, <laughs> I'm, the, the I'm the hero, he yeah. said, of, uh, of this crowd here. He says, 60,000 Tottenham supporters here. He said, I'm the hero. So the referee said, don't do it again. <laughs> <laughs> in the days when you could have a debate with the referee yeah. Yeah. and get your own way. Yeah. Wonderful, wonderful. That's what they call common sense. Yeah. <laughs> yes. uh, Especially when you talk to Dave. Uh, common, common sense common and sense. consistency. Yeah. 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 See, the two do go together, don't That's they? That's right. <laughs> OK, so we'll leave Mackay on the fringe for the moment, then. You might put him in left midfield, then, Alan, but uh, his name certainly has to be in amongst them, I would have mm. thought. Where do we start? Right, right, uh, right side, four in midfield again? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, the guy I'm going to go for is uh, a player that played for Celtic all during the great years under Jockstein again, same as Danny McGrain. Terrific link-up. If you were a left back and you were feeling a little bit sluggish and you happened to play against Jimmy Johnson on the wrong day, I'm telling you, it would be the biggest nightmare of your life. And the thing was that when Jimmy Johnson used to get brought down, which he did many a time, because they couldn't stop him any other way, he'd immediately say to his teammate, give me the ball, because he wanted to go at the full back immediately again, because he probably had his name taken anyway, and he was probably wanting to get him sent off. But he was magic. He was a bit like George Best. He could go that way and without seemingly putting the brakes on, go that way and that way. He was like a road runner. He'd just sprint that way and go in the opposite direction. He was really quite incredible. And Jockstein summed him up very quickly. He just used to say to all the players, don't go beyond them. Just stay behind them. Stay near them. Don't try and guess what he's going to do. Just stay around them for a bit of support and eventually he might give you the ball back. But you can imagine being under the cosh, giving it to Jimmy Johnson, and letting him take the ball for a couple of minutes, and that's what he could do. He could just run with the ball, stop, start, twist, turn, go every which direction, and keep doing it for 90 minutes. He was phenomenal. So Stanley Matthews got into the all-time England eleven. Is he good enough to displace uh, Sir Stan? <coughs> I don't think his end product was as good as uh, the great man's. Uh, but again, as Frank says, um, when he used to give him the ball, he used to uh, be very positive and attack people with it cause people problems. Leave him alone. Don't try and play anything around him. Just, if he needs you, he'll come back to you. Then he'll have a little check and give it him again. And all he wanted to do was to take people on. Uh, his end product for me wasn't fantastic, but used to cause you all sorts of problems. And I don't know whether he was the brainiest of players. So I'll stick with Sir Stanley on it. On on the old adage of what my father taught me, there must always be an end product from a winger. End product. Fair. Okay. There's another little one up in Scotland, didn't there? Willie Henderson. Oh, another great Who was, player. oh, I remember playing against him when, when England played um, Scotland at Wembley. And uh, he'd gone past me a couple of times, you know, I, I had to go over and, and get, and he just knocked the ball, and I said, Willie, uh, don't do that again. And he said, why, Alan? I said, because that's the second time you've done it. The third time, you'll be sitting in the Royal Box. <laughs> and he didn't do it anymore. So that's why I've not picked him. Because he should have been trying to take people on all that time. But he had a very, very similar player to Jimmy, wasn't he? Yeah. It was trademark, wasn't it? In like Scotland Scott for a long time. Well, King wingers, uh, uh, that's right. I mean, Scottish supporters didn't like the English style of play yeah. back then because they thought the English were very methodical and sometimes are quite well, often... Well, they were. They used to win the World Cup, Alan, didn't mm, they? That's right. That yeah. was only one off because it was played <laughs> in England. But, but apart from that, actually, Scottish supporters liked style and they liked the Johnny Haynes or they liked Alan Ball rather than maybe some other types of players. They loved Jimmy Johnson and Willie Henderson. They loved skill and trickery. They've lost it up in Scotland in the last few years, but certainly way back in the 60s and 70s, that's the way they liked it. Does he go in ahead of Sir Stan for you? Uh, not for me, no. I'd, I'd stick with Al and go for the, the maestro himself. All right. Uh, you know, he's uh, brilliant, Stanley. Okay. Can I just say that uh, Jimmy Johnson, when Leeds United played against Celtic, um, I remember that. And what happened. happened was Terry Cooper used to always run the right winger back to the 18-yard box and he finished up being another right back, you know? And Jockstein told um, Jimmy Johnson, he says, let him go. He says, I don't want you back in your own 18-yard box. You get the ball in the halfway line and you go and terrorise mm. him. 
and that's what they did. Destroyed and, them as well, didn't and, they? And Celtic beat uh, Leeds United, who were the top side at the time in both matches. Destroyed them. away. Yeah, remember that very well. OK, so that's the Stanley Matthews, um, right side of this all-time British level. I'm not giving into that yet. Have I got to give into that? <laughs> I think you have, because well, it's, it's two against Scotsman one. I've got to get a Scotsman in there somewhere. Two, right? no, hey, we'll listen, Scotsman, when you talk yeah. about midfield, right. there was a it's time typical. when Scotland had... OK, so it's uh, so it's so Stan, yeah? It's so Stan, it would appear, enough, yeah. yeah. OK, Great so man. I call it yeah. an ex-Arsenal player, isn't it? You know? <laughs> I mean, yeah, he's an ex-Arsenal player, but he's saying Stanley Matthews. Stubborn, to say the least. And argumentative. Argumentative. Yeah. Yes. The side. <laughs> we'll, we'll never think of going back there. <laughs> Put support through, through thin and thin. <laughs> thin, and thin. <laughs> yeah. That's hard to argue. He goes back every now and again, doesn't he? Yeah. Yeah, right. yeah, we wouldn't go back there to live, <laughs> Richard. Let's be <laughs> All right, now then, Scottish midfield players, I think, could get a real call here. Oh, I would have thought. I mean, when you, you think back to the Gemmels, the Massons, the Riox around about that time, there's Sunessas, there's Billy Bremner as well, there's Dave Mackay that's had a mention. Are these boys going in? Jim Baxter. Jim Baxter, of Slim course, Jim. Blimey, yes. He's no. about 18 stone now, but he started off a Don't bit of a stone. Don't about him. Now, you and him used in to... In 1967. Well, I was on the bench listening to you nearly crying your eyes out as usual. He gave me the biggest <laughs> chase of my life, <laughs> playing for England. They <laughs> beat us on that day. Cup. They beat us on that day the year after. That's when they took all the pitch home. That was a 3-2, wasn't it? 3-2, yeah. yeah. Uh, in all fairness, they played well that day. McCallion got the winner, Jimmy yeah. McCallion. Yeah. But Jim Baxter put on a performance that day that equaled with anything I'd ever seen, and I'd, I'd been fortunate enough to play against the Pelés, Tostao, Gerson, Rivellino. I mean, these are, you know, Beckenbauer's. He gave a performance that day that was totally unplayable. And for once in my life, instead of people trying to kick me, I was trying to kick him. And the more I tried to kick him, the boy, <laughs> he gave me the run around. <laughs> oh, he did. He did. did. not make you at one time in front of the bench, if I remember? And when I turned around, it came back again. <laughs> twice. He said that was a day sat on the ball, was not it? We were the on the bench. Little boy. Been done twice. <laughs> His face was going redder and redder. And he, he, he was a special player. He really was. Uh, he didn't do himself justice, unfortunately. Or his consistency well, at, at the high, highest level wasn't, wasn't what it should have been for somebody with absolute pure natural ability. He was finished really, his best days were finished at 27, mm. which was a bit of a tragedy, you know, because he came down to Forest and he was still heavily drinking and all the rest, and still looking the best player on the park, by the still way. Still at Sunderland as well. And Sunderland it? as well. Does it take away the fact that he Forest. was a great player? Oh, he was phenomenal talent, he was. And the most arrogant man you've ever met in your life. I mean, he would say... Next to you. Next to myself. <laughs> he would put the ball down the halfway line uh, and, and say he would hit the crossbar with it five out of and ten. And he'd do it. And he'd put £50 bets on. Then, when £50 was a hell of a lot of money, equivalent to about £500 now. And that's how arrogant he was. And he could do it most of the time as well. Confident Great maybe is another word, is it? Arrogant. Left foot. Com right. Complete self-belief in himself. He could go, and I don't like to say this, but he could go and very often was drunk on a Friday night. He'd hose him down on a Saturday morning. They'd put the strip on him and he'd go out and be the best man in the pitch. And he'd run from 18-yard box to 18-yard box, one two, sticking it through people's legs. It wasn't you this time, Alan. <laughs> Somebody else. Score great goals, take all the free kicks, the corner kicks. Is he in? Does he make it? Well, he's definitely class and world class at that. You're looking but at I, a position I, here you gave to Bobby Charlton as well. To, well, also gave it to Bobby Charlton. We also gave it to Duncan yeah, Edwards as Duncan well. Duncan Edwards, yeah. yeah. Um, you know, for me, I, I'd, I'd have to stick to Duncan Edwards, even though I, he was a great favourite of mine, Jim. I'll stay with Duncan Edwards too, <clears throat> in that position, but that's left side of... Uh, that's which, left which, side of your four, and isn't that it, really, was Duncan Edwards? Left, uh, sorry, that was... Um, that was Duncan that Edwards. That was Baxter's area, left side. He yeah. couldn't play him anywhere else. Yeah. So I'm going to go for Edwards in front of him, but he was... I just had to remind you of that, but I'll remind myself of that performance, because he, he won't let me forget it. <laughs> Well, it's a good job you did before he. he I, was, I, I, was watching. No. I, was I just preempted him, you see, because I knew what he would be at. Look at his face. <laughs> <laughs> he enjoyed that. What about?